Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance. That's Dan Swanson. This is Minnesota, and we're fishing for dinner, but they're not walleyes we're chasing. No, we're going to fish for some crappies. Crappies. Crappies are one of my favorite fish to eat as well. They're kind of cartoonish fish. So uh, to be honest with you, we were bass fishing on this lake before. We marked a whole bunch of crappies here, or what we thought they were on the Lawrence unit uh, around the tree right here. So we have a couple hours to fish. You've got ugly weather. Wind and rain this morning decided, well, we'll wait till the afternoon and go see if we can catch dinner. So we got three hours to catch a few crappies. Think we can catch them? I think we can catch them. The question is, are they big enough? Are they big enough? We'll, we'll find we, out. But we got a backup plan. There you go. <laughs> Stay tuned. Got him. First throw on the power switch. All right, guys. So in looking for ways to catch bigger one, I surmise that maybe moving my bait. Whoops, whoops. whoops didn't we whoops, just whoops, say whoops. not to swing crappies in the stick. boat? I just said that, guys. That's a bonehead move. I should know better than that. He's not quite big enough. But what I will point out, I want to show you a brand new bait, guys, because it's one that we've been talking about. I've been fishing it for over a year, but I couldn't show it to anybody because it's an experiment. It was an experimental bait. Now it's come to market. It's a little tiny Berkeley power switch, and it's made for fishing specifically on forward-facing sonar. So the, the internal body is very reflective from the standpoint of sonar. You have depth control, uh, tons of depth control with it. It's got a flat nose on it, and it's a very, very, very subtle. If you notice, it's relatively rigid and has no real flare to the tail. So it doesn't swim, it doesn't do much of anything that I don't tell it to do. And so it's all about controlling the bait and getting the fish to bite it. I want to point out that was my first throw ever at a crappie with it, and it got one. There you go. Oh look, here's some in front of the boat. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> So all I did on that was, was Dana was just put the rod tip down to the water and reel it as slow real, as I could slow. turn the handle. Huh. And it just got heavy and got him just like that. That's how you do it. <laughs> and so it gets down to the right depth. And look at this, another nice one. And we're going to swing him anyway. <laughs> you know, I just said we're not supposed to. And I want to point out, guys, that's my second ever throw with a power switch. And it is gone down his gullet on a continuous wind. So. That's about as easy as you can get for catching fish. And the key with crappies, like I've already said, is less is more in a lot of cases. So I don't, my instinct is not to get crazy with this thing and try to do a bunch with it. It's just to go ahead and wind it. And the first two casts got bit. So, oh yeah, like that. First, let me point out that three of the first five have now been bit and that's dinner maybe. No, that's not quite big enough either. How big we think we need, Dan? I think 10's at least. 10 inches. <clears throat> and this one's more like nine. Hold still, fish. Come on now. Hold still, fish. There you go. And there it is, little tiny power switch, guys. We're gonna show you that thing a lot in the coming years, I have a feeling, because it's such a versatile bait. I mean, it's basically a jig that lasts forever. I've got one at home. As long as you don't snag and lose it, I've got one at home that I'm at a, like 120 fish on, including a whole bunch of white bass and wipers. And Dan, on the other hand, is fishing the tried and true one inch gulp minnow on a drop shot. So, or, or do you have it on a jig? No, you have it on a jig. Yeah. A jig with a, with a, actually, I'm double, I'm a double uh, gulp. They had a gulp twister and a, ay, and a gulp ay, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. A gulp buffet. <laughs> a gulp buffet. You got a gulp with a side of power bait. <laughs> we are fishing in September, and this bait was released to the public in July at ICAST in Orlando. Um, Berkeley brought it to market there, introduced it to the world. By that point, I had a year of experience with it, and, uh, and so I already knew it would catch a bunch of fish. Mostly what I was doing for them, though, was durability testing. They needed numbers of fish, catch a whole bunch of fish with it. We want to see how long it lasts. And I got some that are just, I mean, they look like you dropped them in your blender for 20 seconds, and, uh, and they still catch fish. But that's one of the efficiencies. If I was throwing, say, if I was catching fish at the same rate and I was throwing a jig and a soft plastic body, I'd go through bags and bags of those of soft plastic bodies. And for me, there's lots of ways to look at baits in terms of, of functionality and value as one of them. Oh, I got that one. But really, at the end of the day, it's got a fish. Well, well that's a better one. <laughs> and this one has swallowed it. Dan, oh, look at that. I mean, and I'm straight retrieving it, so it's easy peasy. I'm thinking you should swim your jig. Get rid of that and swim your jig, dude. Yeah, I'm I mean, it's that. every cast. 
That's pretty good. This one is gone too, like it's almost to the point of forceps gone. But it's got a little hook. Got it. Just a quick demonstrate of the versatility of the bait. I don't know if the crappies will bite it right now, but I've done well with a snap retrieve like this where I'm working it through fish, depending on what kind of fish I'm dealing with. But the power switch has worked well with a, a little bit of a subtle lift drop deal. Also a tip down where it's almost jerk baity style where I'm doing a short little pull. I've drug it on the bottom, just straight scooched it on the bottom like you would with a tube jig maybe for smallmouth. Uh, that works exceptionally well with it. And then I've done a really aggressive hard snap jig, which you can't really do with a 16th of an ounce bait. It's just too, too light, so it doesn't sink as fast but the bigger version of it on a real hard snap jig. So I'll let this one go to as deep as I can get it to go right here. And I got him with it. I can't even get my demo <laughs> off because I was like, why did it stop sinking already? Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> and I want to point out that it's gone again. <laughs> this one you can't even see. It's down his throat, guys. So they talk about each fish to tell you how to catch the next fish, right? So when we started back here a little ways, the very first bait I had was a smallmouth bait that I already had rigged, it was a drop shot. And so I put a gulp minnow on it and I got that one. There's a decent one there for sure. That's not a crappie. A bass? I might, I don't know. It's not a crappie, I can tell you that. <laughs> you wanna net him? Yeah, whatever it is we'll net because it's only on six pounds. So it's, uh, watch these rods there. One of those is a Xenon. <laughs> right, so that, I told you that power switch a few minutes ago, I said that thing was really versatile. Huh. And it's going uh, that way. Yeah. It's probably what, a dogfish. A dogfish. <laughs> All I know is don't lip it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that, and I've got a real light rod, guys. Ooh, so I think you got a northern. I might have a northern. And he must be hooked right in the snoot because it could be a decent bass, but I don't think it is. <laughs> Come on. I want my power switch back or whatever it is. I do too. <laughs> oh, look oh, at that. A it's a grinnel. I was Unbelievable, right. dog. It's a dog, What they call a dogfish? Well, also known as a grinnel. Let's set this also call, down. Also known as a bowfin. It's a ache dogfish. Uh, looks like a grinnel. Looks like a little bit of a snakehead thing. I can't remember what they call them in Florida. Bowfin, bowfin I think is another I think name is for them. Official name. But it's a cool fish. It's a unique fish. We're going to go ahead and put this one back. One thing I can tell you. I bet you I'm the first human ever to catch one of those oh, on one of those power switches because it's yeah, a brand it new bait. But I keep talking about the versatility of it. And I've been throwing it for, at this point, almost a year and a half and I've caught everything with it. And now we just added another species. The whole thing, guys, with the power switch and why it's such a, an interesting deal uh, is because I'm in total control of it. If I just let it swim to the bottom, it basically just slowly settles to the bottom. It doesn't spiral. It doesn't go too crazy, at least not the way I have it rigged. If you snap it hard, it'll dart and turn off to the side really hard. Um, if you keep it really tight, it'll very slowly swim its way down at a nice hypotenuse or a nice uh, angled drop to the bottom on tight line. It's worked very well for me there. I've worked it for Lakers, straight vertical, just picking and dropping it on the bottom like you would a tube jig. Did really well doing that for lake trout, numbers wise. And, um, white bass and schools of white bass that are high in the water column, just making long bomb throws with the bigger version of it into, into white bass with, a, I think they're throwing the three inch one in that scenario. And it hits the water and just starts snapping it through the school tip down, almost like you would a jerk bait. And uh, man, they are rowing this thing, dude. Yeah, they're they're liking it. that thing. I'm getting bit every single cast at this point, guys. As long as I'm patient whining that thing, every single cast. Thank you.